Hello friends, I am here today to tell you that you do not need to train hard like five plus hours a week in order to maintain a fit and healthy lifestyle or to achieve most fitness goals. If you're trying to be like an elite athlete or like a bodybuilder, you might need to train more than what I'm gonna talk about today. But if you're not trying to be an elite athlete or a bodybuilder, Keep watching. As I told you guys in my last few videos, I recently cut majorly back on my training. I am doing less than half of the volume that I was before. And this is simply because my fitness goals have shifted. Before, my goals were fat loss and then reverse dieting, and so I was aiming to lift about five hours a week. Now, my goals are flexibility and mobility, and so I don't really need to lift very much to focus on those goals. So I just kinda wanted to like take a second, sit down with you guys, and walk you through my current like overall like workouts split routine schedule thing, how I'm only doing like 20 to 30 minute workouts at this point, and kind of walk you through the basics of like minimum amount that you need to do to maintain results and to get results. So we'll get to that more towards the end. But first I kind of want to just talk through like my current workout split and my goals and how I have pieced that all together. So goals with my current workout program are maintain the results that I got from my cut and my reverse diet. So maintain my current body fat percentage and the muscle that I have on my body while trying to improve flexibility and mobility. So flexibility and mobility are the two areas that I'm really trying to grow in right now. And the ultimate goal here is to improve like just overall quality of movement. And this should translate into increased efficacy and efficiency of other workouts that I might do in the future. Like if I do want to like focus more on building muscle, if I can get two extra inches deeper in my squat, it's gonna be a lot easier. And also ultimately just to promote longevity because quality of movement is just so important as you age. I just wanna be able to kick ass in the gym when I'm 80 and like run around with my grandchildren. Like that is always my main motivation for like everything that I do in fitness is like the long-term future of being able to live as long as I am alive, you know, rather than just like exist and not be able to move very well. And quality of movement is just so important for overall health because how how your body moves tells your body how it's interacting with the world. And I gave this example in my stretching video, but it's a really good example, so I'm gonna say it here too, is the like power pose where you just stand with your hands on your hips and stand up straight with like your shoulders back, etc., etc. Standing like that for, I don't know what the protocol is, but some amount of seconds gives you like confidence and gives you energy and like it actually works. And it's literally just a change in your physicality that changes things internally in your body. As your body moves, there's different like pressures and twists and turns and torques and within your body there's a chemical relationship and response to that so basically my goal is to improve my mobility to the point where no matter what I'm doing with my body my body feels safe and it feels strong so being the nerd that I am now that I'm in this new phase of my training I wanted to go deep down the rabbit hole and get as much information as I could about this and just learn as much as I can about mobility and functionality of movement and all of that so I started listening to a book called the Align method by Aaron Alexander on Audible and highly, highly recommend if you want to learn more about like this topic of movement being the foundation of like how our body perceives the world and how much of an impact it can have on us like internally and externally. He talks about using like posture and body alignment to build strength, achieve peak performance, reduce pain and build confidence and like all of that good stuff. And it goes into like how to align your body in order to change your mood and reduce like stressful tension in your body, which he talks about could be the difference between like getting a promotion at work and not getting a promotion at work or can impact meeting your ideal romantic partner. Like listening to it is actually fascinating. Highly, highly recommend. And it's also helping me like double down and really get into my new workout programming because not gonna lie, stretching is something that I've always hated because I find it very boring and very painful. So I've been using listening to this book while I'm stretching and working on mobility to like keep myself motivated and learn something in the process of achieving the things. And speaking of listening to books on Audible, this video is in fact sponsored by Audible. If you have been watching me, 
For a long time, you'll know I have been using Audible for years, and I absolutely love it. It's not that I don't read physical books, but I consume a lot more books via Audible. Audible offers an incredible selection of audiobooks across so many genres, from new releases and bestsellers, to celebrity memoirs, horror, thriller, wellness, motivation, business, and so much more. Basically anything you could ever imagine, they have. They also have exclusive Audible originals that are from celebrities as well as renowned experts in certain fields. With a membership, every month you get to choose one free title that you can keep in your library forever and listen to whenever you choose. And now, all memberships get you access to a growing selection of titles that you can access whenever you want. And the selection includes audiobooks, Audible originals, and podcasts, and more are added every single month. The new selection of titles makes an Audible membership so much more valuable because there's just like so much content that you have access to. And you can even discover favorites in new formats like the exclusive Words Plus music series or podcasts, etc. And the Audible app makes makes it super easy to listen anytime, anywhere, whether you're at the gym, stretching at home, traveling, doing your walking, getting your step, step, steps in, or just like doing chores around the house. If I'm doing something where I don't have to have my attention focused on something, I'm usually listening to an audiobook or a podcast. So if you do want to check out Audible, which I highly recommend, because again, I have been using it for literally years and absolutely love it. New members can get a 30 day free trial. If you go to audible.com slash Marissa or text Marissa to 500, 500, I will leave a link down in the description box below. So that said, let's get into my current workout split routine and the thought process behind said split slash routine thing. So my physique goals for this are basically just maintenance. I'm trying to maintain my body fat percentage and maintain the amount of muscle that I gained on my reverse diet. And I guess also very important to note, but I feel like this is just a given if you know me, is I'm also trying to maintain my health. So I want to do the minimum amount at least that will just keep me as healthy as I can be. So purely from the health perspective, lifting for 30 30 to 60 minutes per week is sufficient to maintain good health. So for me, that's kind of the baseline that I started building from. And then for maintaining muscle mass, research shows that you need about one ninth of the volume that you used to achieve that amount of muscle mass. So as like a very, very simple example of this, let's say you're working on building your glutes and to do so you did one exercise three days a week that was dedicated to glutes and you did three sets of each of those exercises three days a week. So you did basically nine sets total throughout the week for your glute. You grow your glutes, couple inches, great, good job. You wanna maintain that. Now you only need to do one set, one set in the entire week for glutes in theory to maintain your glutes. So for me, that would put me at like one to two sets per body part per week. So it's kind of the bare minimum that I wanted to be at, but for me personally, I really enjoy lifting. And as I told you guys last week, week before, I don't know, I was not really enjoying the workout program that I gave myself where I wasn't lifting for every workout. I was trying to just like lift two days a week and do like all that volume in two days and then spend the other days working more on mobility. And I just couldn't get myself to do the mobility if I didn't lift first. So I decided to redistribute everything and make it more fun for myself, also reaching the minimum amount to achieve what I wanted to accomplish. So what I ended up settling on that is working really well for me, not only to achieve my goals, but also to be enjoying my workout program enough to be super consistent with it is I'm back to lifting four to five days per week. I'm aiming for five, but like if I miss a day, I don't care. I'm so I'm doing four minimum up to five. And my lifting workouts are about 20 to 30 minutes. That's it. So 20 to 30 minutes, four to five days a week. I'm doing an upper lower split, so I'm alternating between upper body and lower body. And if I end up skipping a day, I skip one of the lower bodies so that I get at least two of each every week. So I go lower, upper, lower, upper, lower. Each workout is composed of just three exercises. And right now I'm in the hypertrophy range. So I'm doing eight to 12 reps of everything. And I'm doing three to four sets, kind of depending on how I feel and kind of going in line with like training more intuitively. So like if I have more time, if I'm really excited to be in the gym, if I'm feeling super strong and just want to like get after it, then I might do four sets of everything. But if I'm trying to do like more of a chill day or don't have a lot of time or whatever, then I'll do three sets of everything. And all of the workouts are built around compound exercises and kind of derivatives of them. So I'm hitting like the major lifts that are going to be hitting the most amount of muscle groups. And then within that framework, like I said, I'm kind of intuitively training. So I will also kind of adjust intensity and duration and everything based on like where I'm at in my menstrual cycle or just like how my body is feeling, how much sleep I got, how much stress I'm experiencing. So like if I'm at like the end of my menstrual cycle where you should be taking it a lot easier and maybe I haven't slept very well, then I might cut all of the weight in half 
and do super long rest times and only do two sets of everything. And maybe I'd even change the exercises to do something even later. Like if I can tell my body's really not feeling it, I'm not gonna be pushing myself. I'm very much just training in line with what my body is asking of me that day. Since I'm not really trying to make any progress with my lifting, I'm just doing it for pure maintenance, there's really no reason for me to like push through the pain or like push myself beyond what my body is asking of me when I'm in the gym that day. And that's all I'm doing for my actual like workout-y kind of workout. I'm also stretching, which I'll talk about in a second, but this means that some weeks I'm literally only working out for a total of like an hour and 20 minutes, like spread out throughout the week. And I wanted to talk about this because I see so many people thinking that if they can't train an hour a day, five days a week, that they aren't doing enough and they aren't gonna be able to see progress. Or if they can only do, you know, an hour a day, three days a week, that that's not enough. Or an hour a day, two days a week, that's not enough. And when in reality, that is enough. Like that is more than enough. And I know I've been talking about training for maintenance because that's what I'm doing, but I will talk about minimum amount to like make substantial change if you're trying to build muscle or lose fat towards the end of this video, but it's not, it's not much different. But I also wanted to emphasize this because I see a lot of people who train a certain way to reach their goals and think that they have to keep training that way once they reach their goals to maintain their progress. In a lot of cases, you shouldn't have to do that. It kind of depends on what your goals are and how you reached your goals. But if you do things the right way, you should be able to scale back a lot once you get to where you want to be. So yes, to make like super efficient progress towards your goals, if it's fat loss or building muscle, you might want to be training in the gym an hour a day, five days a week. But once you get to where you're happy, you don't have to keep doing that. You can, you totally can. Like that's how I want to get back to training one day once I've accomplished these other goals that I've wanted to work on for quite a while. But like you also are allowed to take a step back, take a breather, like not push yourself as hard, not spend that amount of time training. Just wanted to show you guys that there are options. You know, you can change things up, you can do less, it's okay. So in addition to that amount of time spent lifting, I am also stretching for about 15 to 25 minutes per day, kind of depending on how I feel. I have a routine that I go through that takes me about like 10 to 15 minutes and then depending on how much more time I have, how I'm feeling, if I wanna keep going, I'll just keep doing things for another like 10, 15 minutes. But at minimum, I'm doing one stretch per body part. I usually start either at the bottom and work my way up or start at the top and work my way down. I do 30 to 40 seconds of stretching per stretch. And that's pretty much it for my stretching. I kind of went through all of the stretches in my I tried stretching for 30 days video if you want to see like kind of what I'm doing as far as stretching goes. But it really is super low key. It's just static stretching, like holding a stretch for 30 seconds and then switching to the next stretch. That's literally like everything that I am doing for my workouts at this point. So I wanted to show you guys some example workouts just so it's like very clear kind of how little I'm doing. So this first example is actually my third workout of the week, my second lower body day, and it starts out with sumo deadlifts. All of my workouts have at least one like big compound exercise in them so that I'm really just like kind of hitting as many muscle groups as possible, really getting the best bang for my buck. So I have sumo deadlifts this day, another day I have Bulgarian split squats, etc. Then I lay down, do some hamstring presses, gotta hit those hammies because my hammies are, it, it was a struggle to make them grow to the extent that I did and I I am not losing that progress. So doing some hamstring specific work here. And then I have lying leg abductions just to get a little bit of glute action going on. And for all of these exercises, again, it's three to four sets depending on how I'm feeling. And then eight to 12 reps. And I am trying to kind of apply progressive overload, but I'm not really pushing myself to apply progressive overload. It's just if I'm feeling good, we're adding weight, we're adding reps, etc. If I'm not, then we're not. And again, for upper body workouts as well, there's always going to be one compound exercise at the very least. So this one starts off with incline bench. Worked really hard to get my flat bench strength up during my reverse diet. So now I figured it was a good time to focus on incline. Then I also included incline dumbbell rows, or if I'm actually in the gym for the workout, I do cable rows. So a lot less picky about sticking with the same exercises week to week because I am aiming for maintenance and like the difference between an incline dumbbell row and a cable row is so minimal that swapping between the two week to week is not really gonna affect anything.
thing for me. So if I'm in the gym, I do cable rows. If I'm at home, I do incline dumbbell rows. And then I just do some lateral raises when I hit those shoulders just a wee bit, but not too much. Cause like I've always said, I'm really happy with how big my shoulders are and I don't really want to get any bigger. So we're just doing a couple lateral raises, just like little ones, little baby lateral raises. And again, this workout's going to be three to four sets, depending on how I'm feeling, eight to 12 reps, resting one minute between sets, I'm just having a good time. You know? So that's what my workouts look like. So far, I am absolutely loving this. I could not stick to my previous workout plan because it was just not written with me in mind. So this time I was like, okay, we're gonna make this a Marissa friendly program. And I'm really thoroughly enjoying it so far. Not only because I'm starting out with lifting each day that I am doing a workout and so it's a lot easier for me to stay motivated and do the stretching and stuff after because like I already have momentum. There's so much more flexibility because the workouts are so short that I can kind of throw them in anywhere in my day. Like I could just be doing something and be like, oh hey, I should go do a little workout and then I can just get up and go do a workout and come back and like I only spent 20 minutes working out so it's not even like I really interrupted my day. But also because the workouts are so short, if I really want to, I can do two of them in one day and just just take like an extra rest day. Like the other day, I skipped an extra day. Like I took a rest day that I didn't really want to take as a rest day, but it just ended up being a rest day because you know, life happens. The next day I was feeling like really strong, really good and really motivated. And so I was like, I'm just gonna do upper and lower in one day and then I'll be back on track and it'll be perfectly fine. And I did it and it took me less than an hour. <laughs> I think it took me like 45 minutes to do my upper body workout and my lower body workout and I was back on track and it felt really good and it was good. So hopefully I think a big takeaway from that is that sometimes you have to do things that you don't necessarily enjoy in order to make the progress that you want to see in the gym. If you want to get more flexible and mobile but you hate flexibility and mobility work, that sucks. You still gotta do it, cause that's the only way to do it. But you can also take into account things that you like and enjoy and mix those all in and make a program for yourself that is actually motivating and enjoyable that still gets you to do the things that are gonna get you to where you wanna be, but in a way where you can actually enjoy your journey. So that's what I'm up to. That's my current program for my current goals. Now I wanna quickly touch on some of the slight differences if you are actively trying to like make progress that is kind of dependent on lifting. So like if you're trying to build muscle, if you're trying to lose fat, if you're trying to increase strength, increase performance, lifting related, etc., you might need to be doing a little bit more than like one ninth of whatever you were doing or like only 30 minutes of lifting a week, you know? So for untrained people, all you need to be doing is like a little bit more than you're currently doing. So if you're not doing anything, you could literally just do like two 20 minute workouts a week and you're gonna see progress that way. Like if you've never lifted before and you're not really active and you just decided to alternate between the two example workouts that I gave you, I didn't actually think through, I don't know if they're like a good complete program, but like if you did something similar like that and just alternated and did that twice a week, you would make progress. So if you're detrained, deconditioned, you really don't need to do much. But if you're not a beginner, you do have to put in a wee bit more effort in order to see substantial and efficient progress. For purely strength gains, the minimum that you wanna do is at least one heavy, heavy set, one to three times a week. So yes, you can literally just do like two sets of heavy squats, one on Monday, one on Thursday, and make strength gains. For hypertrophy or building muscle, you're gonna wanna do five to six sets per body part per week minimum. So this could easily be broken down into two full body workouts per week where you just do two to three sets of each of the five main compound lifts. So squat, deadlift, bench press, overhead press, barbell row. Just do two to three sets of those twice a week, you're good to go. So what this means time-wise is at minimum, you're looking at about like two 45 minute workouts a week or like three 30 minute workouts a week. And do keep in mind, this is like the minimum amount to make progress, not the minimum amount to make the most efficient fastest progress possible. But also remember, it's okay to take things slow. You don't have to get your results as fast as possible. I know that's what everyone on the internet tries to sell you, get results in 30 days, etc., etc. It doesn't have to be that way. You can take it nice and slow. You get there when you get there. No one else is keeping score. And here's the thing, yes, maybe you would get to your results a lot faster if you did an hour a day, five days a week, but if you can't be consistent with that, or if you look at that schedule and go, ha nope, and like never go to the gym because that is daunting to you, or you just don't have the time to make that happen, then that's obviously not going to be the fastest for you. Whereas if you can look at a two or three day a week schedule and go, 
I can do that and you can stick to it and be consistent with it, then that is going to be the fastest way to your goals. So there's absolutely no shame in doing the minimum amount to elicit change. In fact, that is what I recommend you start with because then you have so much room to grow, right? Like if you're starting out doing two 45 minute workouts a week and you get to certain goals, you're like, I'm doing good, I wanna do more. Now you can do more and you will start seeing faster results from doing more as opposed to starting out at six days a week for an hour and you plateau, where are you gonna go from there? You're not gonna do seven days a week for an hour, I know you're not because I know you know the value of a rest day, but now you've kind of painted yourself into the corner right? So starting small can be very, very advantageous. Let me know if you guys have any questions about this down in the comments below, or if you want me to expand on any of this in a future video. If you guys haven't been able to tell from this video and my previous videos, I'm very excited about this new phase of my training and like focusing more on like functional movement and kind of rebuilding the foundation of my movement and then just building up from there and seeing how strong and awesome my movement can get. I'm very excited. So I'll probably be talking about that more in the future. But yeah, hopefully this was helpful. If it was, please give it a thumbs up. It really does support me and my channel. Please share this video with your friends, your family, and your gym buddies. If you want to see more content from me all about health and fitness, you can check it out over here. See future videos. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Hit the little notification bell so you get notified when I post a video and I'll see you very soon. Bye.